Hey, Sean here from speedcubeview.com. There has been probably the biggest bulk of cubing information drop just, just recently, and or at least a compilation and data. It's this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. And I'm going to link to the description where all the data is. I'm not going to go through every little bit of it, mainly out of respect for those who actually did it. A few people that first just need to be announced and thanked for this. We have Stuart Clark, who did a lot of the reconstructions. Gil Zussman, who is the creator of SpeedCubeDB, also CubeDB, and also Basilio Norris. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing all those names correctly. And he helped analyze all of this. So that, that you're going to see those names at the beginning of the document as well. So this document has gone over thousands of solves. To be more accurate, it's 4,718 solves and over 400 cubers. Now within this, most of these solves are all CFOP. There's 39 ZZ solves, 18 Rue, and 6 Petrus. So it's mainly CFOP. Rue is the next big step because that's the most popular one next to CFOP. So from what I've read, they're going to do Rue or Hopefully, we'll get some Rue data in the future. There's a quote which I've never heard uh, from Felix, so I don't know where this is from. I, I trust that it is actually a quote, but I love it. It says, I do think world-class F2L and now even last layer is half art, half science though, and finger tricks, regrips are such a key element. So that that's just, I, I really love that. So going over some of this data, this goes into TPS and move count. And this is something that is always a big debatable topic. What's better, TPS or efficiency? And I personally really like to be really efficient. And that's not saying that I'm saying that I'm going to be faster because I'm more efficient, but I just love that efficiency feel of it. But it actually goes through a lot of data of TPS versus average moves and shows that there is a gap or a change in the move count. And one thing it even says specifically in the data is that above a certain TPS, solvers are unable to ensure the same degree of efficiency to proportionally reduce their times. So there is sort of a an average or a mix that we need to have. If we want to be a super fast solver, the data is showing that it's not just about how efficient you can be. There is a trade-off with doing higher TPS, even if you're less efficient. One of my favorite pages goes over the spread of move counts for different cubers and the percentage. And it's interesting because it's very sways different ways and even where the average is. And this, I think, is something that will be really beneficial for a lot of people is the splits. And what you see as far as cross F2L OLL and PLL. And what's really interesting is the faster the time is, the longer cross takes of that time. So having a really efficient cross or a really good cross isn't always the best. Now, more often the longer cross because X cross is happening or something else like that. But once you get like below the four second mark, uh, a lot of those are PLL skips and other types of skips. So that's why we get shorter for the last layer anyways. Now this does go into uh, S slices for a little bit um, in different moves. It goes through different ones and kind of really focusing on the S for a couple of pages because that's becoming a popular thing. And although it can be useful for OLL for most things, at least at the moment, and it might just be because we don't have the best algorithms for it, it's not really the most useful thing. And this also goes into Z, U, and H PLLs with doing R and U moves compared to M moves, and M moves do end up being slightly faster with this data. Now here's what's really interesting with the cross, is that white and yellow cross are the most common. However, when you look at what color is most efficient, red ends up being the fastest solves, red and blue, and white and yellow are not the fastest on average, especially with Felix, who's color neutral. There is some focus on X-Cross on here, and that's something that I recently posted a video of me trying to always do an X-Cross or at least cross plus planning the first pair. 
and I'm going to have a bigger video on that later, but this is really interesting. It's coming at a really good time for what I'm working on. So that's really nice to see how often people do X cross or double X cross or even like pseudo cross and pseudo cross, even though I like doing that, which is basically we don't solve the cross completely or solve it in a way where it could be adjusted. It's not super common with top solvers. And this is really nice. The general rule is that our F12 pair takes eight moves on average. And to be faster, the way it's worded in the document is the solve must let you be able to do that. Because of course, some pairs just don't have more efficient solutions based on what the edge or the corner is doing. I mean, unless you really manipulate everything. Now for the last layer, there's a lot of data because there's a lot of algorithms. It goes through the average speed for different OLLs and PLLs. It also talks about dot OLLs and that even though it gets a lot of flack, if I'm quoting the PDF, that even though it gets a lot of flack, it's better to do the dot OLLs most of the time compared to trying to avoid it. So it has median time loss for dot OLLs is 0.16 seconds, and the minimum time loss for a last slot manipulation is 0.27 seconds. So there's a page on forcing the last layer to do skips, and it talks about where PLL is skipped often around 20% of the time for a lot of the top solvers. And that can happen a lot because of doing different things, such as Felix does ZBLL, 58% of the time that skips PLL, skips in quotes, and I say skips in quotes because, you know, is it a skip or are you solving it? You, I think you understand what I'm trying to say, but anyway, it's, it's completely off uh, what I'm even talking about. Okay, and a couple big takeaways from this is that the CFOP steps, the, the splits that we have on average are 16% for the cross, 45 for the first two layers, 17% for OLL, and 22% for PLL. So that, that's a really good metric to see where you're at with that. And like we said earlier, the cross actually takes longer percentage or higher percentage of the solve in faster solves because of skips or doing X cross. So like I said, there's so much more data and you need to check it out. I'm going to link to it in the description. It, this is such an amazing thing. There's always been a lot of data out there, but this not only puts it together in a really comprehensive way, it's presented in a very approachable way where I think anyone could look at it. And even if you don't know exactly why a graph is set up a certain way or what the data shows, it's described and, and presented in a very easy to understand way. So check that out. Thank you very much to all the people who've put this together. I am so excited for this and I'm really excited for Rue. Can you uh, get on that? Because <laughs> I'm curious to see what we have with that. So we need a lot of reconstruction. So if you are a Rue solver, start doing your own reconstructions and get that all put together. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedcubeview.com for more news and reviews.